Ever wonder what happens to all those plastic bottles we toss into the recycling bin? Yes. Meaning so well. Right? I do wonder. Well, it turns out it's a long road ahead before they end up back on store shelves. Steve Garagiola shows us the recycling circle of life. There's so much in our world we take for granted, including recycling. You throw something in the trash, it goes into a landfill. You put things in the recycle bin, and it gets a little more complicated. After that truck picks up your recycling at the curb, where does it go? What happens to all those bottles and cans? They may come here, to Southfield, one of the largest recycling facilities in the state. The amount of material they process is impressive. Just over 300 tons per day. General Manager Mike Sapo takes us on a tour. The job here is to sort and separate. A contaminated load costs time and money. This is everything, and this is what we call the pre-sort line. This is where they're working really hard to pull off the non-recyclable items. Here's where we can all help make the system work better. Don't put recyclables in a plastic trash bag, because they won't even open it. We don't want to expose the workers to something unsafe. We don't want to contaminate the rest of the material with a, a bag full of garbage. And so if we spot a garbage bag full of material, it's just going in the trash. This facility is only the first stop for all that recycled material. Those bottles and boxes have a long way to go before they end up back on shelves at the grocery store. The sorted material is compacted into large bales and loaded onto semi-trailers. And we ship 10 to 15 outbound truckloads a day of material that's going out to the, the manufacturing sector. For recycled plastic, that likely means a trip downriver to Dundee and a business called Clean Tech. They transform all those used plastic bottles and containers into a product they can sell to companies that make new bottles. The material that we make is called post consumer resin. Without getting into the chemistry, Clean Tech deals primarily with two kinds of plastic, PET and high density. Now I have to admit, I thought the process would be as simple as wash the plastic and grind it up. It's not. Um, in the case of PET, we raise the IV of the material. What does that mean? In, intrinsic viscosity, and that, and that is the stiffness of the material and the flow rate of the materials. Let's just say the process is a lot more complicated than you think. The plastic is sorted by color and chemical properties. They shred it, grind it, wash it, dry it, processing about 400,000 pounds every day. This is second to the last step. The last step is the extrusion and making it into a pellet. Jim asked that we not take close-up videos of the final process, extrusion. They use proprietary technology that they don't want to share with competitors. It involves heating the plastic, and then transformation into a pellet. Then the job is done and it's ready to be shipped to the end customer to make another bottle. And then it's on to the final step in the recycling circle of life. Companies that turn those processed pellets and shreds into bottles of every shape and size, ready to be filled with soup, soap, salsa, and soft drinks. And the cycle starts all over again. Even if you don't buy the environmental benefits of recycling, a recent study by the EPA determined that with equal amounts of material, recycling creates 10 jobs for every one job created when you throw it in the landfill. But for the system to work, we all have to do our part. I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4.